Hey, what's going on guys? I'm back with another video, and this is going to be a, a technical video, at least somewhat. Now, with all the talk about the PlayStation Neo uh, coming out this year, and the, the specs being about two times as powerful as PlayStation 4, there's been a lot of, of talk, talk and rumors about the PlayStation 4 Neo possibly having a Polaris GPU, or APU powered for the uh, graphics output of the, of the system, the console. And I'm going to talk about here is my opinion and theory on why I do not believe this is correct for the PlayStation 4 Neo. And I have quite a bit of reasons to believe this. And I'm going to use just as much logic as I possibly can. Now I'm going to be comparing what I think the Nintendo NX is going to output graphically with the PlayStation 4 Neo as well. So look forward to that here. But first, the rumor was is that the PlayStation 4 Neo was going to have uh, the latest AMD graphics card, which is the Polaris uh, graphics card that AMD is releasing later this year. And the basis for that rumor was because of the uh, supposed specs, the uh, the CUs and the teraflops of the PlayStation 4 Neo uh, GPU was going to be two times more than the PlayStation 4, the original. Um, the PlayStation 4 original had 18 CUs, compute units, and the new PlayStation Neo was going to have 36 CUs and 4.1 teraflops uh, of power. So that's quite a big upgrade over the 1.8 teraflops of the original PlayStation 4, that's true. Now many people assume this was Polaris because of the timing of the release of the AMD uh, APU or CPU, GPU <laughs> of, of this year coming out soon. Now, now the reason why I'm saying that this is not true, here's one reason, is that the, the Polaris 10 GPU that AMD is releasing the specs on that are similar to this PlayStation 4 Neo, however they are not the same. The um, bandwidth of the RAM is not the same, the clock speed is not the same, most importantly the performance is completely different. The Polaris 10 is two generations ahead of the uh, GPU of the PlayStation 4. It's still in a roundabout way based on the GCN architecture from AMD. However, AMD has made it clear that the Polaris is the closest thing to a brand new architecture that there is. Even though the core base down, you know, is still basically GCN, however, the underlying architecture is a lot different than the architecture used in the PlayStation 4 GPU, which was based on GCN 2.0. And the performance of the Polaris 10 is basically has been compared to a NVIDIA GTX 980 Ti graphics card, which is one of the top of the line graphics cards right now as far as computational power, being able to output HD graphics, extremely high quality uh, and high resolutions even uh, beyond uh, 1080p, of course. Now, that Polaris 10 would be the, basically the equivalent of three and a half times, maybe even four times more powerful than the PlayStation 4 GPU, okay? So the PlayStation 4 Neo is, they're saying that the graphics card is basically two times as powerful as PlayStation 4, okay? So there's one thing right there where the CUs and the teraflops uh, may make it you know, over two times more powerful. However, the performance of the Polaris 10, which is clocked at 3.7 teraflops, uh, will give you performance almost equal to a 980 Ti, which would be three to four times more powerful than a PlayStation 4. I've done all this research. I'm not going to put links to all the things I've read about uh, for this architecture, but another reason why I don't think that the PlayStation 4 Neo is going to be uh, based on anything to do with Polaris is because of, of that architecture I talked about. I, I had to do some research on the PlayStation 4 architecture and the APIs that are used by developers 
to understand more about how this works. Basically, the PlayStation 4 uses a couple different APIs for developing games. I mean, obviously they use a lot more than that. APIs are their, you know, the program software that, that developers use to help them build their game, right? So developers like Naughty Dog and all those other guys, they use their own custom APIs. But a common API that Sony has um, licensed or created themselves for PlayStation 4 is the uh, GMNX API and the GNM API. Now, what's significant about the GNM API is that it's a low-level API. I've, I've researched this. You can find articles on this information yourself. But this GNM API that Sony uses for PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 4 GPU, is, is a low-level API that communicates with the PlayStation 4 GPU very, very closely to get the most out of the GPU itself for exclusive games. Okay, so I'm not saying all exclusive games use that API, but some definitely do to get the most performance out of the console and compared to like a PC. So they're, you know, they use these APIs to get all this uh, performance out of the console, to, you know, to make the games look a lot better than what you would expect from a console that's lower in power like the PlayStation 4 with its 1.6 gigahertz CPU and you know the console itself has games that look amazing on it like Killzone, Shadowfall and the upcoming Uncharted 4 are, are you know using that PlayStation 4 original GPU and the games look amazing better than a lot of PC games right they have to use a low-level API to get the most out of the, out of the graphics card, the PlayStation 4. So, this GN, GNM API is highly, highly uh, programmed to be used for the PlayStation 4 GPU, the original PlayStation 4 GPU. So another reason why it's highly unlikely, in my opinion, that the Polaris will be used for PlayStation 4 Neo is because the architecture is a lot different it has similarities, of course, it's still called GCN, but it's a lot different than the PlayStation 4 GPU architecture. So, an API like GNM would have to be modified greatly for it to work on the PlayStation 4 Neo. And that would take away the uh, ability for PlayStation 4 games that were built using that API to just run automatically on the PlayStation 4 Neo with no problems. Now, if the, if the PlayStation 4 Neo was a brand new console built from the ground up and had no, you know, worrying about playing old PlayStation 4 games on it, then PlayStation 4 Neo could probably run the GNM API no, no problem, you know, if they had games developed from that point forward to use it. They'd have to have some kind of middleware in order to get that to work, right? But as far as playing these old games that already were done because the PlayStation 4 Neo is required by Sony to run all these games like nothing happened <laughs> like it's basically like PlayStation 4 just a little bit more powerful then it doesn't make any sense for Sony to use a Polaris architecture and having to go through all that trouble to reprogram everything and trying to get everything to work again it'd be almost like it'd be having to port games over again to the new PlayStation um, so that doesn't make any sense to me. Now, another reason why I don't see uh, PlayStation 4 using Polaris is because, like, yet again, of those Sony restrictions that they are heavily putting on the PlayStation 4 Neo. All the games need to run on both the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4 Neo, and the only differences can be in performance, higher frame rates and maybe a little bit more effects. The actual content of the game can't be changed um, hardly at all. So if they had a Polaris GPU in the PlayStation 4 Neo, the performance would not be utilized because you could actually make games run and look a lot better than what they are currently limiting PlayStation 4 to. Um, so being tied to that PlayStation 4, because PlayStation 4 Neo is not being treated as a brand new console, 
uh, it's limiting what they're going to be able to do on the PlayStation 4 Neo. So it, it doesn't make any sense for them to use Polaris. Again, in my opinion. Now, what I do think they're going to do with PlayStation 4 Neo is, is what makes more logical sense. They've already confirmed that the CPU is an overclocked Jaguar CPU running at 2.1 GHz. So, same CPU as PlayStation 4, and they said the GPU is basically doubled overclocked as well. Now, so what makes more logical sense for Sony to do, and for cost, would be to shrink the die down to 14 nanometers for the PlayStation 4 GPU, and basically make it the same exact line of graphics cards from that time from 2013, probably an AMD 7, 7950 or 7970 or you know one of the probably the one of the best ones ba uh, back then. But since the core of the graphics card is exactly the same as the one used in PlayStation 4, it would get two times you know that power basically and be able to run all the same games because it's exactly the same graphics card basically just better. The Polaris, on the other hand, would not be like that. It's based two generations ahead, and the architecture has been extremely uh, changed over time, and the performance is drastically better. It's much better than two times than um, the PlayStation 4 Neo. So I hope you're still with me, guys, on this. I hope this makes sense so far. So <laughs> that's why I don't think PlayStation 4 Neo is going to be using a Polaris graphics card. I think it's going to be using... Uh, an enhanced version of what they originally had in PlayStation 4 uh, to make development a lot easier and also to run those old games with no problem you know it, they're not going to be emulating the games on PlayStation 4 Neo that's just not going to be possible right they're going to be playing the games like nothing happened so it has to have the same the same uh, architecture it really does and it, since they're putting so many limits on it it makes perfect sense for them to do that so yeah, that graphics card of the PlayStation 4 Neo will be really nice. That's a really good graphics card. However, it's not going to be Polaris in my opinion. So, doing some more research, of course, you know, if you follow, follow my videos back in 2015, October, I believe, I posted a video about how AMD would possibly be using the Arctic Islands technology uh, in their GPU. APU slash for the Nintendo 1X when it came out. And the design win for the APU or GPU for that graphics uh, technology was done in October of 2014. Right around the same time Nintendo was hiring their, their graphics uh, engineer uh, for the next generation Nintendo console from what they listed in their job listing. So the timing was just perfect right there. So it's more likely, in fact, it's highly likely that AMD went to Nintendo and said, hey, we got this new technology we're, we're developing, um, we're testing it out, we're seeing how it's going to work, and Nintendo probably said, yeah, we, we want to use some of that, you know, and, and since AMD is in such financial difficulty uh, right now, and especially back then, they probably gave Nintendo an extremely good price on technology at the time. Back then it was called the Arctic Islands and now they've changed their name of that code name to the Polaris. Okay, so that Arctic Islands is now actually Polaris. It's the same thing. So with the Nintendo NX now to be announced by Nintendo to be a worldwide release in March of 2017, it makes even more sense that the graphics powering the Nintendo NX is going to be based on something from the Polaris. Now, because uh, AMD themselves ha have announced that they will be using this technology in upcoming SOCs. They, they said this uh, back in early 2015 after that design win in 2014. Now, they announced another design win, um, I believe it was late 2015. And the turnaround for when that's going to be released is later this year. Now, that also makes perfect sense for that design win to be the PlayStation 4 Neo, since shrinking dies and, and testing and, and getting you know the same architecture 
on the die. It takes a lot less time than building a brand new architecture and testing it, like with the, with the uh, Polaris, for example. So, my uh, opinion is that the Polaris or something, you know, a custom chip or whatever Nintendo is going to use, um, I, I really believe that, that the Nintendo NX will have the better chance than the PlayStation 4 Neo of using something along those lines of the Polaris. Now you've already heard uh, rumors about it on, on NeoGAF and other, and other people saying that it was Nintendo would use a Polaris, but you know, we will wait and see, but however it makes the most sense that Nintendo would use that because what, what Sony is doing with the PlayStation 4 is very limiting. Uh, with the PlayStation 4 Neo, they have they go those two systems got to work together. So PlayStation 5, I think PlayStation 5 will definitely use uh, the latest, you know, brand new graphics technology. But as far as cost is concerned, I think Sony is really going to keep that cost down, but have that better graphics card from that previous generation that we talked about. A lot of people say, well, you know, Nintendo, there's no way they can compete. They're not going to even try to have a powerful console. Um, they're just going to keep doing, you know, moderate design, basically. Now, you have to remember, too, that President Nintendo himself said that the NX is going to be a complete departure from the Wii and Wii U, not just in name, but in philosophy. So, if you think that the NX is going to be another Wii U or Wii in terms of performance as well, you got to throw that out the window. I know it's very difficult for you guys to understand that right now with the communication being next to nothing from Nintendo, but they said they made it clear that it's not going to be another Wii or Wii U uh, system. That applies to absolutely every part of it. It's going to be a complete departure. So a, a, complete, a complete departure would be that the system has competitive hardware. And think of it also, if the NX was just a, you know, Xbox One powered console or a little bit less than powerful than Xbox One, there is no way that that is going to lure any of the core gamers away from PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. Uh, there'd be absolutely no reason for them to buy the NX unless it has some kind of crazy gimmick, right? Yet again though, remember, complete departure from Wii and Wii U. Which means to me that there is not going to be any crazy gimmick. You know what I'm saying? So the hardware has to be competitive. It has to be able to play games just like PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. It has to play games just like them in order to get those that market back from them. Yes, I'm sure it'll have some kind of an edge on top of it. However, there is no way that Nintendo is going to rely on some gimmick to sell their console and take that chance again. So you, they gotta have both this time, which means they're gonna have a powerful system and innovation that sets it apart from the competition and have it be able to play games just like the other systems do as well, but better. That's where I think Nintendo is going and that's what I think uh, the present Nintendo means when they says complete departure from Wii and Wii U. Kind of like with, with the Super Nintendo, right? The, or Nintendo 64. They had the top of the line consoles at the, at the time, as far as technology was concerned. And they had innovations with the controller, and you could play the same games as, as everyone else. I really do think they're going back to that type of mentality. However, they do have to get people's attention a lot better. So, I think that their innovation, whatever it's going to be with the NX, is going to be something that does set it apart. However, like I said, it's not going to be something that kills third-party support, whereas the system is just not capable of producing graphics like the other systems. I think it's going to be competitive. I think it's going to be um, be more impressive than PlayStation 4, in all honesty, and as, as far as everything that we've been hearing lately. And I do think it's going to have something else that sets it apart from it. But we're not going to be missing out on being able to play all the same games as well. So I think we have those three things to look forward to with the NX. And you know, if you uh, agree with me, let me know in the comment section. And hit that like button, subscribe and comment, and I'll talk to you guys very soon in the next video. Take care.